Photospheres, what are they and why should I care? Well, this is a photosphere. A photosphere is a 360 degree photo of an area, very similar to Google Street View. You can take it yourself using your phone, be it Android or iOS, and when it's finished and stitched together, which is all automatically done on the phone, you can then go on a virtual view of the area that you've photographed. So while making photospheres is easy, there is one small catch. The lens of the camera must stay in the same X, Y and Z location throughout the series of photos you take to make up the sphere. Doing it by hand is quite difficult. Your camera has to rotate like this here and if you're trying to do it with your body it's actually quite hard. You're more likely to swing the camera around your body than swing your body around the camera lens. Doing it with this here is easy. Simply set it, take 360 degree photos, change your location, change the angle of the camera, take more 360 degree photos and away you go. It really becomes very simple. So let's have a look at what it takes to make this gimbal arrangement. I've started by putting a 2.5mm drill bit into my router. Now if you haven't got one of these here, have a look at my video on how I made this here. They're really simple to make and I find they work really well. parts are sanded we're going to see how the phone fits in here and it should just slide in like that these pieces here will form a bottom and a lock at the top but the next important thing we need to do is we need to mark exactly where the camera is for that I'm going to use a square and I'm just going to line it up with the center of the camera lens and I'll make a mark across my plastic here. It is absolutely critical we get this correct. The other thing we need to do is we need to line this piece up here and we need to, I'm going to put it around this way here so that the Uh, protective coating matches here and I need to mark exactly where this is in relation to the vertical center of the lens and that is right here these marks here will allow me to mark the point where I'm going to ultimately swing the camera backwards and forwards and rotate it. If these lines are not in the right place it will not work properly so take your time and get it right. Now that I've got these marks I'm going to draw some holes into the edges here and put in some T-nuts. I'm going to square my lines across that I made on here like so, and I'm going to mark the center of my material here, and this is where I'm going to drill the hole to put my T-nut. I'm also going to take my T-nut here and I'm going to break off these points, because 
I don't need them. They're not going to work very well in my plastic. They're designed to force themselves into wood and this plastic will probably just break. So I'll just remove these spikes. I'm also going to have to file them slightly smaller because they're a bit too big for the plastic. They're just a little bit too round. You can see here they're a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to file these down, make them a bit narrower so they fit in better. Another thing I want to do is I want to take a couple of T-nuts and bore out the centre of them to a quarter inch so that my uh, quarter inch bolt will go through here and this will provide a bushing because this plastic here is going to wear away if I don't have something like this. So what I've done is I've drilled a seven and a half millimeter hole into this piece of plywood and I've just knocked two T-nuts into here. Now I'm going to take the drill press and I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole through the center of each of these and then I'll remove the T-nut. So here's what we've got for the final assembly. I've got a bit of uh, CA glue. I have the parts I cut out, my phone. I have four T-nuts that have had the thread drilled out of them. I have three T-nuts that have the thread in them and it's really important that we don't mix those up. Two quarter inch bolts, four screws about an inch long, and just in case I need them, I've got some washers sitting here as well. I don't know whether I'm gonna need those as spaces or not. So the first thing we need to do, you can see here I've drilled out these, the holes that I marked earlier in here, holes in here, and one at the bottom. So this piece here, the cell phone carrier itself, will get two T-nuts, and as you can see here, I've squared them up. I did this on the disc sander, but you can do it with a file or on a grinder. And I need to glue these here into here like so. So I'm just going to put a little dab of glue in here. And just on the face here. And I'll push one of my threaded nuts in place. Like so. I'll do the same on the other side. The glue I'm using has a slow set time, so I'll get a small chance of repositioning it before it sets. The last threaded one goes in the bottom of this piece here. like so. Now that those three T-nuts are in place, we can take the ones that we've drilled the thread out on and just push them into place like so. And these, because these are not under pressure, they're not being pulled out, can actually just sit in there. So these two act as a bushing and will prevent wear and tear on my plastic parts. Mm -hmm. 
and everything's worked out right, this here should just fit in there like that. Nice tight fit. In actual fact, I won't require the washers. I'm now going to put these plastic pieces on here. And for that, I need my phone. Because they're going to determine just how tightly down these screws need to be. So I'm going to take the one that has the two holes in it, not the one with the not the one with the notch. And I'm going to screw these here in at the bottom. Now we want this here tight enough just to hold it no more, it's just got to touch it. We don't need to put pressure on the phone, it just needs to slide in there easily without wobbling about. So I just get a little bit tighter. That's nice. Next I'm going to take one of these nuts, uh, screws and I'm going to screw it in here. And that's going to be part of my latch. And this one I'm going to take. And it screws in here. And it's going to be the hinge for the latch. So again, I just need to tighten these here up. So it will just hold my phone and no more. So now it can't come out, but by unlatching it, I can easily remove the phone. The last piece I need to do is put this on. Now unfortunately the bolts I've got are a little bit short. Ideally I'd like longer ones, but I haven't got any uh, laying around here and unfortunately the shops are shut so uh, I won't be able to get any until next week. So uh, I'm just going to put these here in here like so. Should just go through and just screw in lightly there. Now ultimately I intend to make little knobs here so I can tighten it up but in the meantime it will basically do what I need it to do. On the bottom here we have our threaded nut to go into our tripod. We can now lift the camera up in either direction and take our photos as it spins around its axis using the tripod to rotate it and uh, the lens will always be in the same place. Now I've just made a small, slight mistake there when I put it together. You'll notice here, here's the lens and here's the threaded T-nut. I've got the camera, or I should say I've got the holder here, around the wrong way. Uh, it's important that everything is in alignment, so obviously this is meant to go together this way here. So just make sure when you put it together, you put it together the correct way. So now that I've made it and have had an opportunity to use it, there are a couple of things. One, you definitely need to have knobs here so you can lock it into a particular position like this here while you spin around and take your photos. The other thing is, just be careful. I made uh, very careful that the lens was in perfect alignment with the mounting point here for my tripod. What I didn't take into account is that not all tripods spin about its central axis. Some of them are offset from the point at which it spins. So bear that in mind, just be careful, check your tripod as well. If not, make the necessary adjustments so that as the tripod spins, the lens stays in the same place in its X and Y location. Now I haven't done a tutorial on how to use the software for making photospheres. It's really easy, both Android and iOS 
phones can do it. You can even do it with a SLR camera if you wish to find the right software for stitching the photos together. But the phone software is just so simple to use. You just go out, take your photos, the software will do the rest of it for you automatically. There are a couple of other things that I haven't mentioned that you can do with this here. And that is you can set your photo to not only be moved like you do in Street View, but you can also set it to move as you do. As you move your phone around, you can walk around with your phone rotate, you can see there the picture is changing. If you happen to have Google Cardboard, and this is a plastic version of Google Cardboard, then you can also put your phone into that and view it and get a more realistic view of what you're looking at. Don't worry if you don't have those things, you can still want to look at it on your computer. And I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can have a look at the image that I was showing there before. I'll also put a link in the description box below to another YouTube video which demonstrates how to create uh, photospheres. And I'll also put a link to the plans you need to make your own gimbal holder here for your phone. Remember, you're going to need to scale the drawing. Mine's made for a Nexus 5, which also has a cover on it. You'll need to scale it to suit your phone. But that should be relatively simple. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Wow, it's just like being there.